partially today he will be uh, talking about partially hyperbolic autonomous uh, diffeomorphism. So, so hey, uh, thank you for this talk, and you can start your uh, first part. Okay, so I would like first to to thank the organizers for inviting me to this talk. I would like also to thank the the audience for being here. It turns out that that there are many people here, and this is this is nice. So, the talk today is about dynamical systems, mainly about partially hyperbolic autonomous diffeomorphisms, as the title indicates. And uh, so, before this, let me mention that I prepared the first version of the talk, and it turned out to be quite long, and I will not have the time to do all of it. So, this is the second version. It's it's. It's very brief, but it contains all what we need. So this, this is the table of content. We start with, with the introduction. We define the basic, basic notions and we give some examples for, for fun. And then the second section is about hyperbolic diffeomorphisms. We define honors of diffeomorphisms and we describe them and we show how to construct them algebraically. And then we define partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms. And again, we describe them and we show how to construct examples. This will be the content of the first part. Second part will be about this. We will define autonomous dynamics and we will discuss the algebraic construction, which will be quite long. And then we try to classify partially hyperbolic autonomous diffeomorphisms in dimension three. And this is the, abbre the, the, abbre the abbreviation of partially hyperbolic autonomous. And okay. start with the introduction. So dynamical systems is the study of the shape of transformations. So in some sense, it's the geometry of transformations. Uh, now, Define the conjugacy. The conjugacy, the, the conjugacy, in some sense, is the notion of the isomorphism between two dynamics. And here we define it precisely. Let x1 and x2 be two sets having some structure. For example, let's say to, topological spaces. And suppose that we have f1, a map from x to itself, and f2, two maps preserving the structure. For example, continuous maps in the, in the category of topological spaces. And then we say that F1 and F2 are conjugate if there exists an isomorphism phi from X1 to X2. We find this equality. And here, for example, in the case of topological spaces, an isomorphism is just a homeomorphism. Uh, and here in this talk, we deal only with invertible maps, I mean bijective maps. And to understand what the conjugacy says, think of map f from x to itself as an action of time. I mean, the elements of x are moving in the following way. At time k in z, a point x moves to the point fk of x. And this happens to the whole space x simultaneously. And we define the orbit of x to denote the set of all iterates of x by f. We say that X has period N if N is the, the smallest integer verifying if N of X is X. And is said to be periodic if there is such an N or equivalently the orbit of X is finite. And in this case, if F1 and F2 are conjugate by an isomorphism phi, then phi sends orbit to orbit, periodic point to periodic point with the same period and many more invariants depending on the structure. Thus, so in some sense, we, so we isomorphically identify X1 and X2 in such a way that F1 and F2 are the same map. And here we give a nice equivalent definition of, of the conjugacy. Let F1 from X1 to itself and F2 as before and 
define the product map on the product space x1 times x2 just by by imposing that the image of the couple couple x y is is f1 x and f2 y and define the set the set of graphs of of isomorphisms from x1 to x2 then the product map acts on this set naturally and in this case if f1 is conjugate to f2 i mean f1 is conjugate to f2 if and only if if and only if the action of the product map on this space of graphs has a fixed point i, I mean so maybe we, maybe we will use this definition to to give in some sense a hint how to prove that uh, and of the filmorphisms are are structurally stable, but I think okay. So in this talk, X will be always compact matrix topological space or or compact manifold, and F will will be homeomorphism or diffeomorphism depending on X. And we call it dynamical system to specify the couple X and F. Um, suppose now that F is homeomorphism, the point is said to have a dense orbit if the set of its iterates is dense. And if F admits such a point, then we say that F is transitive. We say that F is topologically mixing if for any two non-empty open subsets, U and, and V, there exists a capital N such that if n applied to u intersection with v is non empty for every n bigger than capital n. And here observe, or maybe try to think that topologically mixing implies transit. And f is said to be minimal if every point has dense orbit. And here, since we define the notion of, of the isomorphism between two dynamical systems and subsets. Which is the conjugacy relation. We can define the symmetry, the symmetry group of a dynamical system. And it, it's, it's, it's not just the group of homeomorphisms or diffeomorphisms of X verifying this relation and is denoted by stub F or stabilizer of F. Okay. Let's give some basic examples now. Let's start with x equal is the circle, and let R A be a rotation of the circle, just defined by sending x to, to x plus A mod Z. If A is rational, then the rotation is periodic, otherwise it's minimal, in the sense that every orbit is dense. And two rotations in this case are conjugate if and only if A is plus or minus B. And here I mean mod Z. And maybe, maybe there is Z here. And the group stop R, stop, stop RA is, I mean, it's meant, to, it's meant the stabilizer of, of rotation always acts transitively on the circle since it contains SO2. If A is irrational, then it's exactly SO2, and this is in some sense of rigidity. It contains a copy of the increasing homeomorphism of so the interval if A is rational. And the other example is skew products. Let A be irrational and, and consider the minimal rotation on the circle as we defined before. And let alpha be a map defined on the circle, continuous map, and define the skew product map. This on, on the torus, the, the product of the circle to itself just by sending the couple x y to and i mean it's in the first factor we apply the rotation r alpha and in the second factor we apply the rotation by this value which depends on x and here if the homeomorphism this homeomorphism is transitive then it's minimal 
and consider, for example, alpha to be the identity map. I, I, so here we have y plus x. Then in this case, the homeomorphism is mean. And this is a question which I'm not sure if it's a, it's a good question or not. Uh, suppose that the, the skew product is, is minimal. Does the stabilizer of this homeomorphism act transitively on the torus? Uh, the other example is symbolic dynamics. Let here let A to be the set of integers from zero to, to n minus one and define sigma n to be the set of by infinite sequences. So an element by set of by infinite sequences with values on this set. So an element here is denoted by, by x bar just like this. And, we, and here we define the transformation small sigma from sigma n to itself just by the image of x bar is y bar y y i is is x i plus one. So the action of sigma on the sequences is just like shifting to the left. And it's called the shift or the left shift. And in this case, we have that the product topology on this set makes the product topology on this set makes it into a topological space homeomorphic to the contour set and for which sigma is a homeomorphism. And we have that this dynamical system is topologically mixing. So in particular, it's transitive and it has a dense countable subset of periodic points. And the, let me add a remark here is sometimes they use these two, two things I mean, if dynamical system is transitive and and has countable and has dense subset of periodic points, sometimes is called chaotic. So the definition of chaotic dynamical systems is dynamical system which is transitive and and having dense subset of periodic points at the same time. And here, let's see investigate the action of the group the group SL to zero. It's my acting on the torus. So I let A be an element of SL to Z. Then A induces an automorphism on the torus because A preserves Z, the, the lattice Z2, so it defines a map on the Gaussian space. And here we distinguish three cases if A is elliptic, then it is conjugate in, 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 in SL to R to a rotation. But we have that A preserves a discrete lattice, so the rotation must be, must be periodic. And in fact, we have very few examples. I mean, uh, the elements of SL to R, which are conjugate to a rotation, we have only very few examples of such rotations. And the second case is, is more interesting. Uh, suppose that A in this case is parabolic. Then we have that A is conjugate in SL to Z and here we emphasize that the conjugacy in SL to Z. Because if we conjugate by, 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 by SL to R, then we can, we can even here put one and not only K. But the conjugacy in SL to Z is exactly to one of these forms. And geometrically, the, the number k here, in this case, uh, represents how many oriented twists are made. Or more precisely, suppose that k is one and the Aiken values are also one. Uh, then, uh, excuse me, one minute. Uh, then A acts on the to on on R on R two by fixing the line uh, R times zero and 
inducing or translation by value y. It's about on each line, it's about r times one. So the induced map on the torus fixes the circle as zero, corresponding to the circle r times zero and, and rotates the other circles by an angle depending on y. So it's like twisting the torus. If k is arbitrary, then the induced map twists the torus k times in the direction depending on the sine of k. Uh, the other case is where the matrix A is hyperbolic, and this is the richest case. The dynamics here is, is, is chaotic, and, and we will describe it later. And here, the second section, you may say that the talk starts from here. Uh, now we define anus of the few morphisms. Let Mg be a Riemannian compact connected manifold and, and let F be a diffeomorphism. We say that F is, is anus of if the tangent bundle of M admits is splitting into the direct sum of, of two F invariant subbundles. ES and EU. So it's so so each tangent space at point M is the direct sum of two subspaces. And such that so when there exist positive numbers C and and lambda between zero and one, we find that the restriction of the differential of F on on this direction EC is is it is exponentially contracting and the restriction of the differential of F on direction EU is exponentially expanding. Observe here that here we have minus. So this is contracting and when we apply the positive iterations, it becomes, it becomes expanded. And we call ES the stable distribution and EU the, the, the unstable distribution. And here's a remark uh, that being anosot does not depend on the metric. The value lambda does not depend on the metric G because of the compactness of M, but the value C depends on the metric. And the, the typical example of an anosot diffeomorphism is, is a hyperbolic toral automorphism. Consider, for example, the, the automorphism defined on the torus by, by this matrix. This is, this is a hyperbolic matrix. And, and the torus is, is into it with the flat matrix, let's say. Since A is hyperbolic, its differential preserves the splitting of the tangent bundle of R2 into the direct sum of two line bundles, mainly R2 times ES and R2 times EU where ES is the, the, uh, the contracting invariant line by the action of A and EU is the expanding, the expanding invariant line of, of A. Yeah, so, and this is my splitting of this splitting I mean, projects to the torus and defines and defines a, a new variant splitting, contracting and expanding subbundles, and for which A is also with constant value C and lambda is just, is just it's not the proper value or the Aiken value of A, which is between zero and one. Now here we give the general construction of of, of algebraic anus of the fumarians. Suppose G is a Lee, is simply connected Lee group and let, let gamma be, be a discrete subgroup such that the quotient is compact. Let A from G to itself be, be, be an automorphism preserving gamma. So A induces the fumarism, let's call it A tilde on the quotient space just by sending class like this g gamma to the class a g gamma and this is a point on the Gaussian space and this is the image of the point by by the induced diffeomorphism suppose now that 
is that the, that the differential of A at the identity element is hyperbolic. So in this case, differential of A at the identity element preserves the splitting of the Lie algebra into the direct sum of two subspaces, Vs and Vu, where Vs is the contracting space and Vu is the expanding space. And in this case, so A preserves the splitting of the tangent bundle of, of, of the Lie group into the direct sum of two, of two distri distributions so induced by right translating the subspaces Vs and Vu. This splitting projects to a splitting of the tangent bundle because, because this, this, this distribution is, is right invariant. And so the quotient space is, is obtained by, by gamma acting on the right. So it's preserved by gamma and it projects to, to the quotient space and it, and it is preserved by the induced theomorphism and for which it's answered. And here is a remark that, that if G is Lie group admitting so an automorphism whose differential at identity is, is hyperbolic, then G is necessarily nilpotent. In dimension three, we have that, so that R3 and the Heisenberg group are the only nilpotent simply connected Lie groups. But the Heisenberg group does not have the hyperbolic automorphism preserving a lot. So the first non-abelian example was found in the Heisenberg group product with itself. I mean here the, the first non-abelian example of, of an algebraic annals of diffeomorphism. I mean, here we can find the lattice such that so the question space is compact and here we can find the lattice such that the quotient space is compact and we can find the hyperbolic automorphism preserving this last, this group. And here are some facts about, about Anosov diffeomorphism. Uh, being Anosov is an open condition. And so I mean that if F is Anosov, then it has an open neighborhood in the C1 topology consisting of Anosov diffeomorphism. And here the stable and the unstable distributions are always integral. Um, and here we can give an idea how, how to show this. Uh, so you can start with, with any foliation transversal to, let's say to, to, the, di to, to the direction ES. Start with any fol foliation which is transversal to ES. And then the action of the annals of diffeomorphism of this foliation co converges to, to a foliation which is tangent to this, to this direction. And the limit is, is foliation tangent to this direction. So one has to, to prove that if we start with, with any foliation transversal to the stable direction, then if we apply the annals of diffeomorphism on it, then the, so the iterates converge to unique foliation tangent to this direction. And to prove the other, so that this is integrable, we start with foliation transverse to this and apply the inverse of the annals of diffeomorphism and prove this. And here, this is maybe the most important fact is that Annals of diffeomorphisms are structurally stable. And by this, I mean that if G is a small perturbation of F in the C1 topology, uh, is a small perturbation of F in the C1 topology, then G is C0 conjugate to, to F. And here observe that the conjugacy is only C0. We cannot hope to do better than this. And here maybe we can, We can give an idea why this is true, maybe. Um, so let's come back to maybe to, to this definition.
uh, this one. Uh, so here we said that the product mapping is not. Here we said that F1 is conjugate to F2 if and only if the product map has fixed point. Now suppose that F1 and F2 are both anosophic geomorphisms and, and F2 is very close to F1. So let's, let's, let's start with the, the case where F2 is exactly F1. So, so the conjugacy is just by the identity element and, and, and it is the only homeomorphism which is close to the identity that conjugates F1 to itself. So if we think of this space of graphs as, as a manifold, which, is, which has an infinite dimension, this is like a Banach manifold and the product map acts on it. If, if, if we take the map F1, F1, if we take the map F1 times F1, then it's, it's, like, it's, like, a, it's like acting on this space with a hyperbolic fixed point, which is the, the graph of the identity. So if we perturb F2 a little bit, we obtain a map, which is still acting on this space with a unique hyperbolic fixed point, which is close to the identity. I think, I'm not sure, but I'm th I think this is the idea. And here we can give a functional analytic definition of honors of law. Here, so we state a, list, a linearized characterization of honors of diffeomorphisms. And this is due to, to John Mann. Uh, let MG be a compact connected Riemannian manifold and let gamma M denote the space of all continuous vector fields on M. So the metric G defines a norm on this space just by the separate norm. And this this vector space with this norm is Banach space. And here we have that all Riemannian metrics define equivalent norms on this Banach space because, because of the compactness, because of the compactness of F. Uh, and now let F be a diffeomorphism. So F acts on this space of continuous vector fields by, by its differential. So, and the action is by, by continuous linear automorphism of, of the Banach space. And the action is defined like this. This is like it's not just the push forward of X by 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 the diffeomorphism F. This is just like the formal definition. And so we have a representation from the diffeomorphism group of M into GL of gamma M, which is Banach space. We say that LF, which is the the, the linearization of F. So acting on the space of this space. We say that LF is hyperbolic if there exists a splitting of the Banach space into the direct sum of two subspaces, BS and VU, such that BS and VU are both invariant by the action of LF and there exist positive numbers you could see and lambda between zero and one, verifying that the action of, of LF on, on VS is exponentially contracting and the action on VO is exponentially expanding. And here suppose that F is another, then by definition we have a splitting of the tangent bundle of TN. So we can define BS to be the space of vector fields contained in stable direction. And we define similarly the space of vector fields contained in the other direction. So VS and VO are both vector spaces invariant by the action of, of LF, which is so just from the definition. And for, for some trivial reasons, we have that space gamma M is the direct sum of VS and VU, and for which the automorphism LF is, is hyperbolic. And the theorem of mother is that, in fact, the diffeomorphism F 
is honest of if and only if the automorphism LF is hyperbole. And here the hardest part is, is, is the following. Suppose that we have this splitting of the space of, of the Banach space of, of, of vector fields. Then we want to, to, to define a splitting of the tangent bundle of N from this splitting. And there is no trivial reason why this is true. And, and it is true because of this theorem. Um, and here we can state some behavior some of, of honors of the schumacher so let a be a hyperbolic in sl 2 c and then a has two eigenvalues lambda and one over lambda such that we have this and let es be the, the invariant line associated to this value and eu be the invariant line associated to this value and you call them stable and unstable in this case, we have that lambda is irrational, and this implies that the projection of ES and EU on the torus are is, is dense. So, so this says that the foliation, which is tangent to the to the to the, the distribution given by ES, is. So, so this foliation has dense leaves and also and here I can say something about periodic points so I let pn be the set of points such that a n of x is x and define p to be the union of all p and n so p is by definition the set of all periodic points in this case we have that pn is finite and p is dense in T2. And here we can, and here we have that also that the diffeomorphism A is topologically negative, in particular is transitive. So by definition, it's chaotic because it has ten set of periodic points and, it's, and it is transitive in the same time. And here in fact, we, we have that the set of points with dense orbits has full loop of measure. And here there is this question. Uh, so now we can show that in every C1 curve, there is a point with dense orbit. And in fact, almost every point in this curve. And the question is what happens if curves are only C0? Uh, homoclinic points uh, here say something about homoclinic points the point x is said to be homoclinic if the future and the past iterates converge both to a fixed point y and here we can see that the homoclinic points are exactly the intersection points of the two lines in t2 that pass by y and parallel to es and eu respectively and this implies that homoclinic points are countable and dense also. And this is for those who know the horseshoe. It's, it says that around each point, there is a small disk and a power K of A such that the restriction of AK on this disk is, is the horseshoe. In particular, everywhere there is a contour set invariant by power of A on which the restricted dynamics is topologically equivalent to symbolic dynamics with, with which we defined before. And here we have also that the stabilizer of A is trivial in the sense that it contains only the iterates of A. Uh, now let's define partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. Let M be a compact smooth manifold of dimension M and let F be a diffeomorphism of F. Then F is said to be partially hyperbolic if tangent bundle splits continuously into the direct sum of three F invariant sub bundles. 
AS, EC, and EU. Yeah. And so there exists a Riemannian metric on M such that for every unitary vector is in ES, EC, and EU. So respectively, we have that. So this condition is, so is saying that, so that so the restriction of, of DF so on, on ES is, so is, so is uh, contracting and the restriction of DF on EU is, uh, this one on DF on EU is expanding and the action of DF on the central, this is so we call it the central so direction. It's so lies in between. It's not so as much as contracting as, so as on this so direction and it's not as expanding as in this direction. And there are some facts. Yeah, so being partially hyperbolic is also an, it's also an open condition. That is, if F is partially hyperbolic, then it has an open neighborhood in the C1 topology consisting of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism. And stable and unstable distributions are, are also integral, but the central distribution is not in general. And here to show that ES and EU are integrable, I think the same idea. For example, to show that ES is, or, or let's say EU is, is integrable, just start with any foliation which is transverse to both ES and EU and apply the iterations and we have. But here observe that uh, ES and if we take the dismantled distribution ES plus EU, then this is not integrable in general. So, so we have that ES is integrable, EU is integrable, but the direct sum is not integrable in general. This is just remark. And the other one is that partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms are not structurally stable in general. And here we give how to construct algebraic examples. And the construction it is, is the same as before. Just start with a simply connected Lie group, gamma in G, uh, and let gamma be, be, be a discrete subgroup for which the, the Gaussian space is compact. And let A be, uh, and uh, A from G to G B so be, an automorphism preserving gamma. In this case, if the differential of A at the identity element is partially hyperbolic, then with the same construction as before we can. So we can show that so the induced diffeomorphism by A on the Gaussian space is also partially hyperbolic. And here we give an example, which is not algebraic. Uh, let phi be a diffeomorphism and let alpha for, from M to G be CK map where G is compactly grouped and define the map sometimes called the skew product also from the product space M times G to itself just by sending the couple XG to, to phi X and Alpha X apply to G, and this is like like left it's my left action of G on itself. So phi alpha sends the fiber X times G to the fiber phi X times G, and by applying the left translation L alpha X on the second factor, and I mean on G. And in particular, we have this, this relation. This means that phi alpha is in some sense the lift of phi to, to this product space. It's not the lift, it's, 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 it's a lift, not the lift. It's not one of the lifts. Uh, and pi is, it's not the projection on air. 
the different morphism phi alpha is equal to g extension or skew product of phi. It's by using alpha. And if g is a circle, then it's simply called a circle extension. And now suppose that the diffeomorphism phi is Amazon. And we have a skew product as before. Suppose in addition that there are that so there is a horizontal phi alpha invariant distribution H on, on the tangent bundle of, of the product space. And by this I mean a horizontal distribution which is transversal to, to the fibers at, at every point. And suppose that this distribution H is phi alpha invariant. Uh, in this case, the diffeomorphism. In this case, the diffeomorphism phi alpha is partially hyperbolic, such that the phi invariant splitting ES plus EU is lifted to a phi invariant splitting of distribution H because the restriction on H projects isomorphically to, to the tangent spaces of M. And if we have splitting here, we define splitting here. And it is also invariant. And the central direction is, is just the direction tangent to the, to the fibers. So this defines the splitting of the product space and satisfies the partial hyperbolicity conditions. And the theorem is that circle extension of an anosov diffeomorphism is always partially hyperbolic. And in, the, and in this case, the central distribution is just the vertical line subbund tangent to the fibers and the circles. And this is equivalent that so there is a horizontal continuous distribution which is invariant by the action of phi r. And here, the other example of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms are the time one maps of geodesic flaws of hyperbolic surface. Uh, mm. uh, this is just a remark that a set R has many actions that acts on the hyperbolic plane, the unit bundle of hyperbolic surface projective space of lines in the plane or moduli space of complex to I or space of translation surfaces or the Lorentzian space of homogeneous polynomials of degree two to find R2. But here we will consider only the action of, of SL to R on the unit tangent bundles of hyperbolic surfaces. And here, if I let H be the hyperbolic plane, so we have that the orientation preserving isometries of hyperbolic plane is, is the group PSL to R, which is the quotient of SL to R by identity minus identity. And the action is like this. This isometry group acts transitively on the unitary tangent bundle to one of H. And in fact, the action is also free. And because of that, we have that the action of PSL to R on the unit bundle of H and, and its action on itself by left so translations are equivalent. I mean, there is a diffeomorphism from PSL to R to the unit bundle such that we have this reaction here coming next with it. And here we want to give a general remark, but we will apply it in our case. We say that Riemannian manifold is homogeneous if the isometry group acts transitively, and we say it's isotropic if the action is transitive on the unit bond. For example, H is isotropic. Now fix a Riemannian isotropic space, and we want to describe the geodesic flow. Let G be the isometry group of this Riemannian space, and 
we know that in this case, the G acts transitively on the unit band. And now let phi T be the geodesic flow. So it defines the flow on the unit band whose orbits projects the geodesics of X and the geodesic is the projection of some orbit. And in this case, we have that the action of G and the geodesic flow commute for, for trivial reasons. And this implies in particular that there exists a one parameter subgroup H T in G such that the geodesic flow is it's nothing but the action of H on the right. And here note that the action is on the right and this is like very important. And we have now that if S is a hyperbolic surface, then we have also an identification. The unit bundle of S is also like this. And the geodesic flow on S corresponds to the algebraic flow on this quotient space defined by the right action of this one parameter group. Yeah. And to verify this, just take S to be the hyperbolic plane itself and, and prove that the geodesic flow on the hyperbolic plane corresponds to the action of this group on. on I mean, take the hyperbolic plane and the and the geodesic flow on the on the unit bundle of this hyperbolic plane corresponds to the action of this group so on the right of on PSL two. And the corollary is that the time one maps or the time one map of the geodesic flow of hyperbolic surface is partially hyperbolic. And here we need to check that the action of HT on the right on PSL to R is, is partially hyper. And that's not how. And I think that's all for the first part. <laughs>